What's up guys, Jimmy here with another episode of the Lots of Game Show. On this episode of the Lots of Game Show, we're going to be looking at my top 10 Xbox 360 games list. There's also going to be a review for the Game Syndicate. And finally, we're going to be taking a closer look at our retro game of the week, Jet Set Radio Future. This is the Lots of Game Show, episode 3. So I'm going to first start off showing you guys my top 10 Xbox 360 games list. I'm really excited to get into this. And just like the past two lists that I've done for my top 10 Xbox 360 games, um, they, these games I'm about to show you, they're in no particular order. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Also, I would be really interested to get your guys top 5 or top 10 Xbox 360 games. That you're most fond of definitely leave your top five or top ten list in the comment section below and be really interested to check that out so let's get started so gears of war 3 is a game that i've been looking forward to for quite some time i love gears 1 and gears 2 i know a lot of people had some gripes and issues with gears of war 2 i really like gears of war 2 i thought it was an amazing game but i have to say that out of all the gears of war games Gears of War 3, hands down, is the best one. Epic, you did an incredible job. Epic Games really took the time to make sure that they did it right. They conducted a very successful beta for this game. They corrected issues. They corrected bugs. They really took the time to listen to the community. What do you like about the game? What are your issues? They took the time. They implemented those changes and the feedback to make a solid epic incredible game that won't be forgotten anytime soon of course you have a slew of different multiplayer options to play through you have the horde mode and you also have the new epic beast mode um, and these levels and maps just look gorgeous they look incredibly good and also the campaign in my opinion doesn't get talked about enough i love the gears of war series campaigns i think they're done very well and they definitely even raise the bar even further with gears of war 3. the storytelling is storytelling at its finest in my opinion uh, in terms of video games it definitely has that movie high quality movie feel to it uh, that really has you interested to know what will take place next all right next chapter starting what's going to happen you really get interested to know what will take place and how it will end. I'm really glad I've, I've had the chance to put some serious time on Gears of War 3 and I'm really interested to know what is going to happen with the next installment because uh, I'm sure that the Gears of War series is not finished. Um, I would not be surprised if there would be another trilogy uh, planned. Um, for the next generation, but we'll have to wait and see on that. But definitely a gem, uh, and definitely one of the best Xbox 360 games that you can pick up. So in this top 10 list, I did select a Call of Duty game. Um, there are a few good Call of Duty games that I can recommend, but I did narrow it down to one. Unfortunately, it is not Black Ops. Oh man! But the Call of Duty game that I did select for this top 10 list my personal favorite, the one that I recommend, is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. When I first got this game, I was hooked big time by the multiplayer. I remember I had the chance to be part of the beta for Call of Duty 4, and I just was so blown away by how fun it was. That was just the main thing. There's a lot of first-person shooters out there. There's a lot of multiplayer experiences that you can select. But I was just really taken back at how fun and addicting Call of Duty 4 was. I actually had the chance to play this one again the other night. Still people on it. Of course, not as many people as there were a few years ago. 
but just a phenomenal game. At the time, the visuals were just unbelievable. I did also get the chance to play through this one, the campaign on Veteran. Had a blast playing through that as well. But of course, you know, the multiplayer is when I, where I spent the lion's share of my time. Just a phenomenal game. Phen Infinity Ward really, really um, showed us what true innovation was all about when they created or developed the multiplayer experience for this. Truly a gem that I think a lot of us will never forget. Elder Scrolls Skyrim, of course, this was not available last year. Uh, to replace this one, I did have Elder Scrolls for Oblivion in my list last year. Oblivion is actually the first game that I got for my Xbox 360. Um, I was also a huge fan for Elder, of Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. But when this game was released, I was a little bit nervous because there was so much hype behind this game. I had seen the screenshots, I had seen the gameplay, and just so many people were so excited. I was a little bit nervous that this game was going to let me down. Unfortunately, it did not let me down. Skyrim was everything that I had hoped it would be and more. Um, incredible visuals, obviously, a phenomenal soundtrack. An improved story, in my opinion, when compared with Elder Scrolls 4. Elder Scrolls 4, Oblivion, I enjoy that story, but this one I enjoyed even more so. Now, the combat in Skyrim still isn't perfect, still needs some work. The Elder Scrolls games, they're not known for the combat, combat and gameplay. Not to say that it's horrible, but uh, it definitely needs some, some improvement. Pretty much anything else though in terms of the actual game, they really hit it out of the park. I'm really impressed with Skyrim, I'm really interested to see what DLC is going to be available for this game. This game is so massive, What I mean, what am I even thinking about the DLC? But I am interested to know what um, the folks at Bethesda has been working on. Um, a phenomenal game. It's just an incredible game. If you're a big fan of games that give you the freedom to explore, to create your character the way you want to work out the story, you can do so. You don't even have to play the single player campaign with. That's the great thing about the Elder Scrolls games. You can go off, wander, explore, hunt, um, and just spend countless hours doing the side missions and just exploring. And that in and of itself can be a lot of fun. Okay, Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption. I can't believe it's already been two years, almost two years since Red Dead Redemption was released. And you wanna talk about a game that set the bar for what other game developers should check out in terms of a, developing a high quality game. This game has it. A soundtrack, there's a lot of good soundtracks out there. There's a lot of good games with good music in them, but this game really has just a perfect soundtrack to set the mood, set the tone for this epic western story. Uh, your play is John Marston, who goes out exploring the American West in Mexico. I remember playing the first 10 to 15 hours of this game thinking, man, I've just explored so much. I can't believe how much I've done in this game, whether you're hunting, or learning to train horses, or or uh, finding the right horse uh, to get you from point A to point B. Just when I thought, you know, I had explored so much, the game opens up to a whole nother huge, massive, gorgeous section. The game looks phenomenal. Some of the best graphics that you'll see this generation. The developers, I saw some of the behind the scenes, they really took their time in terms of the process of developing the landscapes and developing the animals. The horses look so lifelike. The writing is done very well. Rockstar, they know how to make a great game. They know how to write a great story, and this game has it. The action is also non-stop, um, depending on how you want to play it. If you want to just plow through the story mode, you can do this, do that. Um, of course, you can also improve your character through the different 
side missions that you take on, and also the other um, things that you can pick up the game, whether you're hunting or picking different plants um, to, to sell these items and also to collect these items. Uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal game. There's racing in the game. Uh, you know, like I said, there's side missions, but the game is massive. It is huge. It also has a really amazing uh, download content add-on, uh, Undead Nightmare. And that one definitely switches up the pace in terms of the different zombies that are coming out after you. Definitely uh, switches things up if you want something different in terms of the gameplay and the enemies that you encounter. Red Dead Redemption, one of the best games, just generation, definitely one that I recommend. So the next game, Tales of Vesperia, this is a game that was actually in my past two top 10 Xbox 360 games list. This is one of the few games that has remained put and has not gone anywhere. I haven't switched this one out. This is one of my favorite Xbox 360 games. This is one of my favorite RPG games this generation. Um, just a phenomenal looking and fun to play RPGs. The game, and I've said this before, but the game looks like you're playing an anime. The enemies you'll encounter and the different areas you'll get to explore were done very well. They've got this gorgeous anime hand-drawn look um, with some pretty hilarious writing and voice acting. Um, the game has a very engaging storyline and the gameplay is really what's going to sell it for a lot of people. I know a lot of people might be a little discouraged or turned off by some of the JRPGs that are out there. They might think that's a little bit slow or hard to get into. The Tales of Vesperia gameplay and battle system, it might take a little bit a little while to get into a little bit of a learning curve but once you do it is very fun very entertaining and exciting um, not boring at all uh, in terms of the, of the battles that you'll encounter uh, and the different special moves that you'll get to perform um, the main character Yuri is a very good lead character and the characters that are in this game you actually really do you're interested to know what takes place. I know a lot of games out there, the story is neither here or there, but this one I was engaged from beginning to end. It took me about 50 to 60 hours to finish this game, and man, it was uh, definitely quite the experience. Not a lot of games like this, definitely recommended. Uh, even if you're not into JRPGs, I believe there's a demo available for this one. In the United States, it shouldn't be too big of a problem for you to find this um, in perhaps other regions of the world. If you have a hard time finding this one at a decent price, I recommend that you check out Xbox Live uh, Games On Demand. You might be able to find it and download it at a reasonable price. Fallout 3. Now, you guys know I am a fan of the Elder Scrolls games and the developers of the Elder Scrolls games put this one together and uh, wasn't really sure what to think about this one, but I'll never forget the first time I saw this game, I believe the first gameplay that I saw for Fallout 3 was at the 2008 um, Microsoft E3 press briefing. They showed this one and I'm like, oh man, here's another RPG to add to the list. This game is another massive game where you get to explore a huge wasteland, huge areas um, at and around Washington, D.C., post-apocalyptic. Um, and you have to be careful in where you explore. Um, the place has been destroyed for miles on end, and it's kind of got this destructive beauty to it. Um, but the different enemies and uh, foes that you'll encounter. You'll have a slew of different weapons to select from and you can, depending, you can really select and choose the way you want to play this game which I really appreciate it. Whether you want to just go guns blazing or you want to slow things down and really break down each enemy on how you're going to fight them and take down their weak points. Um, there is several different DLC add-ons available for Fallout 3, but man, just a phenomenal 
role-playing game uh, that, again, a game that lets you explore and play a lot of the game the way you want to play the game and make choices. Um, you know, you can play as good or as bad as you want to, but there will be consequences. Even if you might think, oftentimes, if you play a game and you're like, oh, I'm just going to do good choices, nothing bad will happen. That can actually affect you negatively. If you play as the purely good guy, that can actually work to your disadvantage. I'm not going to go into any spoilers, but I really appreciate to the fact that whether you make good choices or bad choices, what? certain huh? things happen to you uh, in the game. Um, just an incredible role-playing game. I'll be really interested to see. Of course, there was Fallout New Vegas, but uh, be really interested to see on what direction Bethesda takes the Fallout series, especially with this next generation of gaming consoles that's going to be here uh, in the very near future. So before I got Bayonetta, I wasn't sure what to think about this one. A lot of my friends had recommended that I check this one out. It had also gotten some really good scores on some of the uh, major websites. And also, um, the review crew for Famitsu in Japan actually gave a perfect score for the Xbox 360 version. So I ended up picking it up and playing through it, and man, I was blown away at how much fun I had with Bayonetta. The main character you play with, Bayonetta, she is a witch, and depending on which weapons you have, right off the bat, she's got guns in her hands, she's got guns on her feet, she's doing all these crazy, insane combo ac acrobatic uh, attack moves, shooting down enemies, punching down enemies, kicking down enemies, and also since she's a witch, she's got these special abilities and magics that she'll use um, against her foes the enemies that you'll encounter, at first I thought some of these enemies were, were bosses, but they're just basic enemies you'll encounter throughout the level. And then you get to some of the boss battles. Some of the boss fights are some of the most crazy, insanely epic bosses that I've ever encountered. Um, you know, I thought some of the boss battles in Devil May Cry uh, and uh, God of War 3 were crazy. The boss battles in and Bayonetta were even more insane. The writing is done very well, a very engaging story. Um, you play as Bayonetta, you kind of play throughout these levels and kind of learn how she came to be, why she's here, what is her purpose. Um, she doesn't know really a whole lot about herself, um, but definitely worth playing through. Platinum Games did a phenomenal job with the different variety they will encounter with the different levels in this game. The levels are just done so well and have so much variety to them. They were a real joy to play through and they're worth a second playthrough. Just thinking about the different moments in this game makes me want to jump right in and do another playthrough. I'm really hoping that Sega has already put the wheels in motion so that Platinum Games can get to work on making a sequel for this phenomenal, phenomenal action game. So Bully is a game that actually I've heard so many great things about, and it's actually a game that unfortunately got overlooked by a lot of gamers. Um, in Bully, you play as Jimmy Hopkins, and Jimmy is at a place called Bullworth Academy. He gets transferred to this school, and there are all types of classmates that he'll encounter, from nerds to jocks to preppies uh, to cheerleaders. He'll also encounter teachers that set just really bad examples. And he'll get to do side missions uh, for these classmates and for different teachers. And just the writing is just so hilarious. The story is just so great. And I love checking out the different areas in this game. Uh, you kind of speed things up with travel, either with your skateboard or with your bike. Jimmy will be there to stick up for the underdog or stick up for the little guy and also he'll be there to put the guy that's two or three times his size in his place which was very satisfying and just very hilarious uh, again this game has some great writing and which makes makes the game very enjoyable I had heard some rumors that a bully 2 is in development and I wouldn't be surprised if that got announced in the near future of course Rockstar has a lot of games 
um, or some very important games that people are looking forward to like Max Payne 3 and GTA 5. But Bully is definitely a game that you should check out, um, especially if you're looking for a game with a lot of freedom um, and that's fun to play. So just like the Call of Duty games, there are a few different Halo games that are available for the Xbox 360. And I had some trouble narrowing it down. Um, again, um, there are some good choices to choose from. Halo 3 and Halo Reach are both great games. They're both very, very enjoyable. Um, Halo 3, in my opinion, has the better story than Halo Reach. But in terms of the actual multiplayer experience, which I put my time into is the multiplayer experience, I had more fun and enjoyment with Halo Reach than I did with Halo 3. Um, Halo Reach, of course, has the multiplayer, it has the campaign, which, in my opinion, isn't as good as Halo 3, but there's a lot of great multiplayer modes. And, of course, you have the firefight mode which I actually really enjoyed as well uh, just a great game I love selecting through the different classes or the class loadout depending on the need of the level and what you're encountering which class you need to select uh, just a phenomenal game Bungie did a great job with Halo Reach uh, really interested to know what Halo 4 is going to be all about I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. A lot of people are really skeptical as well. Uh, but if you haven't picked up Halo Reach, definitely check this one out. Uh, it is a great uh, and very enjoyable first-person shooter. So the last game I'm going to talk to you guys about for my top 10 Xbox 360 games today is a Mass Effect game. And uh, we've got three Mass Effect games here. We've got Mass Effect 1... Mass Effect 2, and Mass Effect 3. Um, just kind of break things down for you guys really quick. Mass Effect 1, in my opinion, it was the game that felt more like an RPG than Mass Effect 2. Um, I really enjoyed Mass Effect 1. I know a lot of people had issues with certain aspects of it, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Um, and with Mass Effect 2, they fixed some of the gameplay issues that were present in the first Mass Effect game. I wouldn't say f they finally tuned the uh, gameplay. They more or less overhauled the experience uh, in terms of the different encounters and the different gameplay mechanics. They definitely improved some issues that were found in the first Mass Effect game. What I didn't like about Mass Effect 2 was I spent so much time and effort to make sure that some of the characters in Mass Effect 1 didn't die. And then in Mass Effect 2, you know, you get to some of these moments with some of these characters, and all you get is a cameo. So I was like, what? That's it? That's all I get? Um, of course, the story continues on into Mass Effect 3. But in Mass Effect 2, not only does Commander Shepard have to be restored from a physical standpoint, but the restoration of a team needs to take place in that game, which was really interesting. Getting that perfect team together um, to take on the suicide mission. And then, of course, you have Mass Effect 3, which I know Mass Effect 3 right now, there's some controversy and also hype still in the air. Um, but I have to tell you, Mass Effect 3, I was not disappointed. Um, I really enjoyed the pacing. And I'll tell you also why I, I liked Mass Effect 3 and why it's my favorite Mass Effect game. Um, check back next year if that's still the case. But the reason why this is my favorite Mass Effect game is because it reminded me what I liked from the first Mass Effect game in terms of the pacing, the story playing, storytelling, and uh, some of the areas that you get to explore. And then it also has the improvements, gameplay-wise, that were formulated and, and took place in the second Mass Effect game. Um, I really enjoyed Mass Effect 3, and 
it is my favorite Mass Effect game. Um, check back next year to see if that's still the case. Um, I'm hoping to do another playthrough for all these Mass Effect games in the near future. It is an epic, epic story um, that is definitely not to be missed. Uh, even if you're really not that into RPGs, check this one out. Uh, there are demos available for Mass Effect 3 and I think Mass Effect 2. I don't think there's a demo for Mass Effect 1, but it could be wrong. But anyway, guys, there's my top 10 list um, for my Xbox 360. And uh, just a quick reminder, please make sure to include your top 5 or top 10 Xbox 360 games in the comment section below. So my retro game of the week is Jet Set Radio Future for the original Xbox. So Jet Set Radio Future is a game, an inline skating game developed by Smilebit and published by Sega. It is a game that is set in the future of Tokyo and a large organization known as the Rokaku Group is pretty much taking control of the Tokyo government and has made it so the people can no longer enjoy the freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And so the main characters in this game, they've banded together and their main purpose is to bury the city in graffiti. You go around tagging the different areas assigned on your map to obtain objectives and to open up other areas of the map. The game has a really nice cell shaded look to it and the soundtrack goes really well with it as well. Um, one of the uh, individuals that contributed or has a song that's on uh, Jet Set Radio Future is actually Mike D from the Beastie Boys and it just the music goes well. The game is very fun to pull off the, the different combo special moves and also boost especially if you're doing a race. The game also has some really cool offline multiplayer modes as well like different race modes. Um, there's also ball hog mode, flag mode, and graffiti wars. I'm really excited because it was just recently announced by Sega that uh, Jet Set Radio HD game is going to be coming to the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade, so definitely stay tuned and be on the lookout for that one. Jet Set Radio Future is actually backwards compatible with your Xbox 360, but make sure you get the version that's a standalone title and not the one that's bundled with the uh, GT 2002 race game. Uh, just a great game that's a lot of fun. So today's review, I'm going to be reviewing Syndicate, and the game that you are going to be seeing that I'm playing is the Xbox 360 version. So in the Syndicate single-player campaign, you play as Miles Kilo, who is an agent for the Eurocorp. In the future, corporations and technology rule the world. And as Kilo, you enter these missions, obtaining new applications, new weapons, and new intel. And at every turn, opposing corporate forces will be there to make sure that Kilo is not successful. Now, some of you might be wondering, what is one of the main differences to Syndicate when compared with a lot of the other first-person shooters that are out there. Well, I'll tell you, in Syndicate, you have to do a lot more than just run, shoot, and dodge. Uh, in Syndicate, you have apps at your disposal to use against the enemy. Uh, now, these apps involve having the enemy to commit suicide and maybe drop a grenade to take himself and his squad out. Uh, another app that you can use involves hacking into the enemy system and persuading him to go against the squad. Say there's a squad there, you can hack into that person's system, ha hack into his technology because the characters in the game all have a chip implanted in their system uh, and you can make them do certain things uh, like persuade them to go against your squad and essentially be a part of your team for a limited period of time. Uh, and now there's one more app that you'll have to use throughout the game a lot. One app that I haven't mentioned yet that you'll have to use quite often. And that involves um, taking down the enemy's armor. Oftentimes, uh, the enemy will have strong armor, and you'll have to have, use this app to break down the enemy's armor. So ultimately, you can take that enemy down. Um, so throughout the game, you'll have the opportunity to choose which abilities to use in the game. And choosing these abilities, uh, you know, you'll gain new technology, new, um, new dart chips, and you'll get to 
in fact, use there'll be like a tree or a setup for which new abilities you want to select. Um, now, this would have been great if, you know, in terms of replayability, you're like, oh, maybe I'll use these abilities for the next time I play around. That would have been great if the single player campaign, you know, was worth playing. Unfortunately, the single player campaign is weak and un uninspired. Now, the controls are great and work flawlessly. The music works well with the futuristic setting. Um, and besides the occasional excessive lighting, the visuals in Syndicate are not bad. Um, but the actual story is just boring and has little substance to it. Uh, in the campaign, you will collect pages upon pages of data in regard to the systems, organizations, and associates within the, within the game. Uh, this data, for the most part, is just lifeless data that does not enhance the enjoyment of the story. So as I was playing through the single player campaign for Syndicate, one thing came on my mind and that was Bargain Bin. Uh, this game screams clearance rack. Uh, if you see this game, if you are interested only in the single player campaign, you're not interested in the multiplayer or, or the co-op, um, wait for this game to hit a price drop. Um, if this game is around $10, $15, you see it down the road for that price, yeah, pick it up. But please don't pay the full price for this game. It's just not worth it for the single player only. Now, fortunately, there is more than just the single player campaign. There is a decent four player co-op uh, mode in Syndicate that I thought was pretty good at times. You play throughout these several missions with up to three of your friends or three randoms or wherever, which wherever path you want to go. And these levels are done really well. I actually enjoyed them playing them a lot more than playing through the levels in the single player campaign. You have certain objectives that you need to obtain. And this four player co-op experience is was fun at times in the terms that not only do you have to worry about taking down the opposing forces, uh, obtaining certain mission objectives, but also you have the ability to heal your teammates when they're in a bind. Oftentimes, you'll uh, be the one, you'll be the opposing force, and your teammates will be healing you. And oftentimes, on the other side of the area or other side of the map, um, your teammate might be taking damage. But before you can even get to him, uh, you can actually uh, heal that teammate before you even get there. Uh, and I actually really enjoyed this. It was very decent at times you know there are in my opinion uh, you know the way that this is marketed you know four player co-op four player co-op this game is marketed you know it has to, i have to tell you though guys there are other four player co-op games that you know co-op is not new and in my opinion there are other uh co-op games out there that do it better than syndicate in my opinion like uh left for dead 2 but um, that's not to say you won't have fun. This is a different setting. Uh, this is a little bit different than like Left 4 Dead 2 or some of the other co-op games out there. Uh, but in my opinion, like I said, the single player is a bit weak. Um, and to pay for the $60 is kind of a high price to pay uh, for this decent and sometimes really fun uh, co-op experience. Uh, but overall... Uh, I b believe there is a demo for the online co-op, and if it is still up, I would definitely give it a shot, give it a try, and uh, see what you think for yourself. So guys, overall, First Syndicate, I give it a 7 out of 10. This is a game, it's not horrible by any means. The co-op is actually pretty fun, pretty entertaining, and the campaign is alright. It does have some shining moments to it. But in terms of the co-op experience, which it has some great moments to it, I think there's some other first-person shooters or third-person shooters that offer a better co-op experience for a much lower price. In my opinion, I would definitely wait for the bargain bins for Syndicate. Uh, it's definitely a game that's not bad, but it's not that great either. If you see it for $10, $15, uh, yeah, definitely pick it up. Um, but as I said earlier, there's definitely other games that you can check out that are worth your time and money. So guys, that's it for today's episode of the Lots of Game Show. I really hope you enjoyed this video and definitely stay tuned for more episodes. 
I really appreciate your support and feedback. And as always, guys, I'll talk to you later.